So what's going on guys? DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again. And today I am adding a supercharged algae scrubber to my four displays all running off one main sump behind the wall. Got some really dirty fish. I got three puffers. I've also got a ray in here. So ever since I moved my eels into the 75 on the same system, my nitrates have been climbing slowly. And I just wanted to build something that would knock them back down. So that's the purpose for this algae scrubber build. So let's get to it. So this is the storage container I used. I believe we got it at Costco. This is a little PVC rack I made to hold my egg crate material. I drilled some holes in the bottom of the PVC here. Just in case any water gets in here, it won't stay stagnant, it will drain out. And most of this stuff is all stuff I had. I haven't had to buy anything for this yet. Uh, now I'm gonna cover this with some knitting mesh so the algae doesn't uh, go through and clog my drain. So this is some knitting mesh I had left over from other projects and I'm just piecing together enough. This was an old algae scrubber that I'm gonna use for this piece. So I just used some little zip ties around the uh, egg crate through the knitting mesh to hold it so it doesn't move. I'll go ahead and put this together. I'm not going to glue any of this um, because it's going to be completely sealed in that bucket so who cares if it got a little drip. And that way if something doesn't work out then I need to change something I'm not wasting any of my fittings. So I kind of marked how far down I wanted that other side. I anchored that side. Now I've got a level on here. So I can hold this level and anchor this side. And I'm using some pretty long screws. And now I'm putting a level across this way and I'll anchor these side plates as well. And you're just going through plastic and this PVC board so you can just push these right through. You don't have to pre-drill it or anything. I wanted to have a little bit of extra support on the center brace. Because again, when these don't have any algae on them, they're not going to be that heavy. But I've pulled a couple pounds of algae off of each one of my screens when I've cleaned them. So I've got this upper support is making it so these can't shift and fall. Uh, it's got enough tension on this where, for whatever reason, not that they probably would, but these can't uh, possibly turn and fall in. Alright, so I'm clamping this in, basically clamping it on the T. This is just a grinder with a cutoff wheel on it. So I did one pass. And then I actually widened it up a little bit, just running it back the other direction. So for those of you guys that have been following my channel, you know I like to try different things, and see what works better. So I've actually got two different sizes of uh, plastic mesh here. The real fine mesh, and then this one's a little bit more of a coarse mesh. I've got two of each in this algae scrubber, and I'm gonna try each one and see if one holds the algae better or which one produces more. And I will let you know on one of the future updates. All I'm using to do this is just a hole saw I've got. I'm scuffing up these screens so that the algae has a good sticking surface to attach to. Very lightly going over it because you can rip these doing this as well. I was doing a, a really rough sandpaper and it just didn't get that surface rough enough where that algae was having a hard time. It was falling off of the, the screens. I did this on the last algae scrubber I built and the algae is able to hold on a lot better than sandpaper. So after roughing this up, I went ahead and rinsed it off, getting the material off of it. Now we're sticking it in here. Make sure you're as tight as possible. You don't want any gaps where the water's just draining down, not on the screen. So I did have to cut these to width. And then I'm just using some zip ties, putting them through the knitting mesh. These do get pretty heavy when they're full algae, so I'm putting five on here. 
now that I've got them all on there, I'm just going to take a pair of pliers, I'm grabbing the ends and giving them a little bit of a snug. And then just taking some dikes and cutting the ends off. I already measured how much I need to cut off the bottom so it fits in my container good. And these are the bulkheads that I use. So when I need to clean a filter, I just unscrew this and pull this whole assembly off. So I put my bulkhead in. Uh, I wish I could have gone right at the bottom, but the middle section here is not quite big enough for my bulkhead. So I will be carrying a little bit of water in the bottom of this, but shouldn't be too bad. So I'm using up some old bulkheads as well. So I'm gonna glue this tube in here, and if I ever have to take this bulkhead out, I still can. I can just unscrew that and pull the whole thing out. But if you're buying new ones for this project, I recommend getting threaded bulkheads on each end because then you can do whatever you want with them. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the same stuff I always use, which is this uh, clear cleaner and then just some regular clear PVC cement. I'm going to use two of these L brackets here. So I had this laying around also. So I'm going to anchor this to the L bracket. So I countersunk those, put four screws in that. And when I drilled the hole in the tub, then I set it on here, marked this, and drilled this. So the lights I'm going to use for this, guys, I got from Lowe's. Uh, not every Lowe's has them, but it's an LED grow light. And I've used them on my other algae scrubbers for a couple of years now. Haven't had any issues. So I've got two of them. I'm going to go ahead and start with those, and we'll see how it does. So the lights I ended up mounting to this center cross member here. And on this tag, it does say it is suitable for damp situations. Helps if you put them in the right way. I use these little electrical or plumbing brackets. They're little plastic brackets. You can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Only about a buck a piece. So it slides in. And then I just pushes over a little bit and cradles that, holds it good. So here's a little better view of the plumbing set up there and how I use these brackets to hold it. And then we'll just hook all these up. Now keep in mind I'll only be doing like one of these at a time or two of these at a time when I'm cleaning them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Now I've got my pump set low so I'm going to turn this on and then we'll start adjusting the the pump and that's why I put this large pump even though I didn't need it all at the time. I did have my secondary overflow in case that one bottom drain gets clogged for whatever reason. The overflow just going back as well. Okay, I'm going to turn my lights on. So keep in mind guys I was reusing a lot of stuff I already had but this is a basic list of what I used to put this project together and I was tying into existing plumbing. And we'll see how fast I start producing algae, guys. I will update you on this. My other thought is if I don't get enough light or algae growth with um, this much light, I can either double up the LEDs or since my, if you watched my previous video on my algae scrubber build here, a 100 watt CFL bulb does just as good as a PAR 38 bulb. So I might take a couple of these heat lamp bulbs, drill a hole, and shine the light in right here for these two algae scrubbers on this side, and then maybe put both of my LED bulbs on the back one. But we'll see how it goes like this for starters. Hope you guys enjoyed this build, and hope to see you next time. I will be updating you and let you know how this thing's doing. Have a good one. Later.